What's going on YouTube? This morning, or for you this evening, I thought I would show you how to do an aircraft compression test. I've already got this Cessna 150 behind me set up. I apologize for any noises in the background. There's a train yard behind us. We're next to an Air Force base. It gets very, very loud here. But if that interests you, stick around. Now this is obviously a continuation of my uh, practical demonstration series um, for students who are getting ready to test for their AMP or for people who are just going to test for their AMP after military experience or whatever it may be. So that's what this video is directed at. And first things first, you want to make sure you're following a manual. Um, I'm just going to use the procedure for from AC 4313-1B. You can also use, if it's a Continental engine, you can also use the Continental Standard Practices Maintenance Manual. It has a really good procedure in there as well. So I've already got the aircraft set up, but I want to take a moment and talk to you about the tools. And the first thing you're going to need is a compression tester. Now, in the real world, this will need to be calibrated because it is metrology equipment. This one has the master orifice, which the Continental Standard Practices Manual calls out for, and I will explain exactly what that is in just a second. I've also got a spark plug adapter. You can have both a rigid one or a flexible hose, whatever works best for your aircraft. So let's get back to this master orifice for a second. Continental said that the rule that is 60 over 80, your pass fail of 60 over 80 is not fair. So they came out with a, um, a procedure and they got it approved by the FAA that uses a master orifice. And they said that the master orifice adequately compensates for ambient temperature and pressure. What this means is, is that as you go up in altitude, there is less atmospheric pressure on the crankcase side of the rings. So the higher you go, the easier the air is going to leak out because there's less pressure on this side of the balloon than on this side, or not balloon, of the cylinder than on this side of the cylinder. So they use the master orifice to compensate for that. I'm going to show you how this works. First, I'm going to go up to 80 on my left gauge. And this is a good chance to check the calibration or check that your um, your gauges are reading the same. This one's reading about 78 and this one's reading about 81. I can feel the smallest of leaks right here. So I figure that's probably what's causing it. So now that I've got this open, I'm gonna open my master orifice and we see that it's reading like 50 PSI. Go ahead and close this off. So why is that 50 PSI important? Well, that is the new pass fail number for today. That master orifice number will change on any given day at any given altitude and at any given temperature. That's the point of it because it's just a calibrated leak that is determining the acceptable leak that the engine can have. And today it was 50. I've seen it as low as like 39. I've seen it as high, I've seen it as, high as 55. It just depends on the day. So let's prepare this engine to do a compression test. I'm going to start with cylinder number one on this Continental O200 engine. It's important to understand that the engine should be hot when you do this, you should have ran it. Now this is one of our school's aircraft, so it doesn't run, it hasn't ran in many, many years, there's no fuel in it, it's been sitting in this hangar um, in this condition for at least th five years at this point. Besides the point, um, you need to make sure that you're also safe. The easiest way to do that is to either ground the P-leads on the magnetos or disconnect all of the spark plug wires. And if you're doing a compression check, you should have all the plugs out, or at least the top plugs out anyways. So just take an extra little bit of time and get all the plug wires off. That way your spark plugs can't fire. You wanna make sure this thing is safe. Obviously the magnetos that are on the back of this engine generate their own spark. And if there's any leftover fuel air charge, it could do exactly that. I'm gonna set my adapter right here on the baffle for just a second, which is a terrible tool practice. Do not do as I do. And now I need to find top dead center for this cylinder. Now, understand it's gonna be hot if I've been running it, so you might burn your finger doing this. So you could also use the adapter to do it if you don't wanna burn your finger, obviously. But I'm gonna put my thumb over it and I'm just gonna turn until I get to the compression stroke. Like I said, I already have it set up. Listen to this. You can hear the air rushing out. Now you can't see it off camera, but I'll show you what I'm doing real quick. Okay. Don't stand in the propeller arc like I am either. I've got my thumb over this and I'm pushing on the prop and I'm feeling that air come out. If I go back the other way, I can feel it suck my thumb in and I'm just doing that until I feel air coming out and I know that the cylinder is on its compression stroke. Now, I'm gonna keep turning it until I can see the piston right here. Now, I can see it, but you probably can't on camera. So let me see if I can, uh, get a light in here. 
I don't know if that's any better. Um, you might could see it right there. Let me just, yeah, you can kind of see the shadow of the piston inside the cylinder. And depending on the engine, you may or may not be able to see it. Um, a small flashlight, like one of those really small pin lights works well because you can stick it right here and sort of look for it. You can stick your pinky in here. Be very careful if you stick your pinky in here, you can very easily break it if you move this too fast. The other thing to note, do not stick a screwdriver in here. Do not stick any sort of solid tool in here. Don't stick a lead pencil in here. Don't put anything in this hole to find the piston unless it's your pinky and be very, very careful not to break your finger. Now. Some of my viewers were telling me my fingers are too big to do that. I understand you can usually almost always see the piston with a flashlight. So now I know that this, this cylinder is very, very close to top dead center. I'm gonna get the adapter threaded into the cylinder. Let me scoot you out of the way here. All right. And get the adapter scooted inside the cylinder. There you go. Let's move on to connect. Propeller safety tells me that I do not wanna stand in this propeller arc when I am using this compression testing tool, because when I put 80 PSI in here, I'm multiplying that 80 PSI over the area of the piston and then applying that force to the crankshaft, which is then being transitioned to the uh, propeller, which can hit me in the forehead and kill me. Yes, people have died doing a compression test. It is best to do it with two people. Only ever do it by yourself if you absolutely have to, and then you need to be very, very, very cautious. So I've got this on zero, I've got this on zero, the pressurize is on and the master orifice is off. Zero, zero, and now I can connect it. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my compression tester. Whoops, I'm gonna go ahead and connect my compression tester. Come on now, there we go. And I'm gonna go up to about 20 PSI on this gauge. And then I see the right gauge starting to come up. If I want, I can always pull it back in the opposite direction and then go back to where top dead center was. At this point, you wanna maintain control of the propeller with both hands. And let me show you what that looks like. Turn that off real quick. When I'm pulling this propeller through by hand, I've got both hands on it, one hand here and one hand here. Because when I'm on this side of the, comp of the uh, top dead center, when I'm on the opposite rotation, it will start to push against this palm because it's trying to push the piston down. It doesn't care which direction, it just wants to push the piston down. But when I pass top dead center, it starts to pull on my other hand. So you wanna maintain positive control of the propeller with both hands, and then if you have to let go of it for any reason, you wanna clear the propeller arc completely and then let go. You don't wanna let go of it right here because it might spin around and hit you. Now, Fun fact, if you're doing this with the DME, you can ask him to help you and you can have him hold the propeller, but you need to be sure you tell him exactly what to do. I know he's a DME. Do not assume that he's going to know what to do. Do not assume that he's gonna to pretend to know what to do. He might pretend like, well, I'm just, a, I'm just a, a owner of the aircraft. I've never done this before. So you need to give him very clear instructions on holding the propeller with two hands and not to move it. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this this way so that I am clear of the propeller arc. You can see I got about 30 PSI on this gauge and about mm, 22 on this gauge. And I'm just gonna slowly but surely go up to 80 PSI. Now you notice I'm not touching the propeller. That's because I have the piston perfectly on top dead center and it doesn't really wanna move one way or the other. So I'm reading 80 PSI on my left gauge and I'm reading about 64 on my, uh, 66 on my right gauge, which is actually really good for an engine that hasn't been running. So now before I do anything else, I wanna very quickly reduce this pressure and make sure that this is off so that now this piston is safe again. And when I disconnect the compression gauge, now I know that it's safe to touch the propeller. I don't wanna to touch the propeller or move anything until I have this disconnected, which brings me to another little safety point. You have two options with this. If this has pressure on it, I'll go ahead and go up on pressure just for the sake of demonstration here. You have two options. You can either shut the pressurization off, or if you wanna be any quicker than that, maybe a child runs into the hangar, there's a dog, I don't know, things happen at airports, and you, and you wanna stop it, just go reach here and just real quick disconnect the compression tester. It's gonna let all the pressure out of that cylinder, and now the engine is safe. I will show you one final thing. I've got the rest of the plugs in it, and that's very important. If the other plugs were out, this would be much more violent. But this is what happens when you let the propeller slip or if you're in the propeller arc. Now, like I said, 
that would be a lot more violent if the other plugs were not in it because the other cylinder or the next cylinder in firing order would come up on the compression stroke with no resistance. But you saw how quickly this propeller flipped around and this blade came around. If I was standing right here and not ready for that, it's gonna really, really hurt. And I've hit my head enough as a mechanic, I don't need a propeller to slap into it. But now, now that this is disconnected and now that the uh, compression tester is out, I can move to the next cylinder and it's just rinse and repeat over and over and over and over again. I will show some other techniques to find top dead center probably in another video. I like physically looking in there the best. There are other ways to do it. If you do compression checks in the order of firing order, it's really easy. For example, a Continental six cylinder is one, six, three, two, five, four. So if I did number one first, then I know I can go to number six next. And all I have to do is turn the propeller the minimum amount to get to the number six compression stroke and so on and so forth. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe. As always, go build something and be easy little post edit note here if there's anything that you want to see make sure you drop that in the comments below and i will show that next on the side note check out this ratchet isn't that cool makes putting things in really easy instead of doing all this you can just sit here and just crank it i'll go ahead and torque that in for my students